The concept of manifesting a force ghost after death is one of the most mysterious practices within the Jedi arts, being only accomplished by a few known Jedi Knights to date. While this ability to transcend the physical plane used to be more commonly known within the ancient Jedi practice, the ability to retain one's consciousness after death was widely unheard of within the Republic Order and modern Jedi. And before the rise of the Empire, there was only one Jedi who had figured out how to do this, and that was Qui-Gon Jinn. Minor spoilers ahead for the season finale of Obi-Wan. Pioneering this technique was the Jedi Maverick Qui-Gon Jinn, who began his training long before the blockade of Naboo and the events of the Phantom Menace took place. He set forth to investigate this elusive practice under the guidance of the Force Priestesses on Dagobah, taking his first steps towards prolonging his consciousness after his mortal body died. While we know he was semi-successful in the endeavor, the most recent episode of Obi-Wan saw his Force Ghost taking full form in live action for the first time ever. Despite this, however, he has yet to be seen again and at any point in the timeline after this physically, even when Obi-Wan and Yoda discover this practice for themselves during the Days of the Empire. So this raises the important question, why can't Luke see Qui-Gon's Force Ghost at any point during his adventures, despite being able to see Obi-Wan, Yoda, and even his own father in Anakin? Well, today, students of the Force and acolytes of the galaxy, let's explore two different possibilities on why Luke cannot see Qui-Gon's Force Ghost. Up until this point, Qui-Gon has been limited to disembodied voices, only appearing in a physical form on a very rare occasion. During the Mortis arc, in fact, is the only other time Qui-Gon appears to be a physical spirit. During the Mortis arc, he is able to finally form a physical body, and Qui-Gon states that he is able to do so because they are in a particularly Force-sensitive area, otherwise he would just be a voice. He tells Obi-Wan and Anakin that his place is among the strongest Force nexuses in the galaxy, and that Mortis provided him with the necessary strength to finally complete this feat. In Obi-Wan, however, Qui-Gon appears on Tatooine, which seems to be a relatively neutral world with no special Force connection as far as we are led to believe now. The first option regarding why Qui-Gon couldn't be seen at the end of the Imperial Age has to do with the lifespans of Force Ghosts, as apparently they do actually end, and the fact that Force Spirits are not meant to be eternal. Contrary to popular belief, Force Ghosts do not represent the afterlife, but instead they represent something of a middle ground between life and death. If a Jedi is proficient in this practice, they are able to retain their consciousness for a little while longer and their physical body dies out, but eventually even their astral form will dissipate and they will no longer be able to manifest themselves in a physical form or even a voice, joining with the Force now fully. This goes along with a Jedi not defying death, as this isn't a Jedi defying death as this would go against the will of the Force, only delaying its onset or some of its onsets, as again they are still a part of the Force at this point in time. But ultimately, these spirits must pass on, and after a while, Jedi are unable to continue manifesting themselves in the forms of Force Ghosts. It's entirely possible that by this point in time, that being Return of the Jedi, Qui-Gon's Force Ghost has already dissipated and passed on to the next world. And by the time Luke is even able to harness the Force and sees the remnants of the Jedi before him, Qui-Gon is already gone. This would mean that there isn't even an embodiment of Qui-Gon left in the physical world for Luke to see. Again, Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Anakin all pass on very close to one another. However, it should be noted that Yoda's Force Ghost does obviously appear in The Last Jedi, meaning that he has delayed his time to pass on far longer than Qui-Gon may have. Since Qui-Gon's training was not complete, it might theoretically suggest that his Force Ghost was weaker than the others, though since we know that Qui-Gon was killed by Maul in 32 BBY, over 20 years before the events of Kenobi, this doesn't seem to be the case, as his consciousness has been present for a significant amount of time. This seems to indicate that his Force Ghost was relatively sturdy, and he may not have been much weaker than any of the others. Additionally, in The Rise of Skywalker, we see Rey reach out into the Force in order to commune with the Jedi before her, and among the various voices of Jedi from previous generations, Qui-Gon can be heard, indicating that his consciousness still resides somewhere within the Force for her to tap into and communicate with to some degree. However, again during this moment, other voices did reach out to Rey that had not received the same training. Qui-Gon, though, references Rey by name, suggesting that these are not simply voices in the past being heard through time, but he's actively speaking directly to Rey. But now, let's go into the second theory, and a theory that I like a little bit more. The interesting second theory suggests that a Jedi must have some sort of a personal connection, or at the very least, a cursory form of knowledge of the individual they are talking to on the spiritual plane, at least in canon. 
We know that communicating with a force ghost takes a lot of effort and force sensitivity on both sides, and force ghosts cannot simply appear to any individual who are not strong enough within the force to see these force spirits in full. And we can see this on numerous occasions. A prime example of this is Luke Skywalker himself throughout the events of the original trilogy. The first time Luke encounters a Jedi who has died is when he hears the voice of Obi-Wan helping him to destroy the Death Star. And this is just as Luke is beginning his training. At this point, his connection with the Force is at its weakest, and Obi-Wan seems to be barely able to communicate with him. As Luke gets stronger in the Force, however, his visions of Obi-Wan and other Force ghosts become much clearer. On Hoth, and between his weakest and his strongest points, his vision of Obi-Wan is still weak and fleeting, lasting only a few brief seconds before dissipating. But by the time he reaches the power of a seasoned Jedi Knight in Return of the Jedi, he is able to hold prolonged conversations with Obi-Wan on Dagobah. And as we said, he can see all three Force ghosts on Endor at the same time, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. And for a more recent example, we see that Qui-Gon has left Obi-Wan for the majority of the Obi-Wan series, as he had cut himself off from the Force and had weakened his connection to it. Once he embraces his power again, however, he is finally able to see Qui-Gon, who even states that Obi-Wan wasn't even ready to see him. If this is the case, then it suggests that Luke may have only been searching for Jedi that he knew, and he is creating a connection with the masters who helped him within his training. Even if he is not consciously searching for specific Jedi, his personal connection might mean that they can clearly appear to him much more easily than someone like Qui-Gon might be able to. This builds a bridge between what they do and say, and what Luke is able to see, since this connection was established in life. Luke, of course, though, has never met Qui-Gon Jinn. He doesn't know what he looks like, sounds like, or anything about the pioneer of this force ghost method. And this might mean that Luke simply doesn't know who or what to look for within the force when trying to speak to Qui-Gon, as even if Obi-Wan Kenobi had a difficult time reaching out to Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan who knew Qui-Gon exceptionally well and was essentially his father, Luke would have a very difficult time reaching out to him as of course he never knew him. When we talk about this, theoretically, Qui-Gon could be sitting next to Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Yoda on Endor after the second Death Star was destroyed. And it's possible that the three of them are still able to see Qui-Gon since they knew him in life and recognize him after his death. But anyway, my friends, and students of the Force, what did you think about this? Do you think that it's odd that Qui-Gon Jinn, to our knowledge at least, never reached out to Luke Skywalker over the course of his training? And do you accept this as a viable reason why Qui-Gon cannot actively speak with Luke? Do you believe that people in the physical world must have a connection with Force ghosts in order to interact with them? As always, my friends, thank you guys so much for watching the channel. May the Force be with you, and have a great day.